All right, so I've downloaded the file that I want to print, uh, iPhone 6S case, and there it is. First thing we have to do, of course, is uh, after downloading, is unzipping it. So I'll go 7-zip or extract all, whatever. Uh, extract. And then I usually go in. There's the files. Let's go back here. There, it made an actual folder. I'll go into the files. It looks like there's only one STL file. I'll double click it and I'll just check it inside of, in, in this case, Cura, just to make sure that it uh, looks and, and is what I want it to be. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, it's fine. So I'm, I'm going to modify this though. So I want to actually open this in Blender. So what I'll do now is go into Blender. I'm going to delete, use the X key, the default cube. Uh, and then I'm going to go File, Import, STL File. Go to Downloads. Go into that folder, go into files, and there's the case. And you can see it's quite big. Don't ch change the scale. Leave it as is because we, we want to hold on to that scale for uh, when we export it. You can see the little 3D cursor down here. I'll go Shift A to add text, or I also could have gone up here, add text. Uh, I, I'm just used to Shift A. Hit the tab button, and tab button's going to switch us into text, or sorry, edit mode. I'll hit the backspace four times and type my name, and hit the tab key. I'm going to want to scale that up fairly significantly. That's okay. Uh, that's too big. Yeah, right about there is good. I'll use the G key to grab it. Actually, I'm going to place it over here because we're going to work on it for a bit. I'm just using the middle mouse button, but if I use the shift and then press the middle mouse button and move the, move the actual mouse, I can position this right where I want to see it. Then with the text selected, uh, I'm going to go to modifiers. And we're going to add a solidify modifier. And I'm going to just set this the thickness. I could just drag this. Yeah, there we go. I'll drag it to about there. That looks good. A little problem, though. If you look, you can see how it's kind of this edge is not smooth. I want to smooth it. If I right click, I can't actually smooth it. There's no set smooth. But there is a convert to mesh. So let's start by converting it to a mesh. Second thing I'm going to do now is shade smooth. But we have another little problem where it rounds the top edges as well. So if we go into Object uh, Properties, what we can do is go to Normals and then Auto Smooth. And now this is looking pretty good. This is perfect. So what I'll do is go to Top View, grab it, I'm going to place it here. But I, I'm going to go to Side View. I want to make sure from Side View that it intersects. So I'm going to grab it like that and make sure we can see it from above and below, which we can. Because remember, what we're going to try and do is remove this, actually cut this out of the uh, phone case. A little problem, though. If I look from how I'm going to be looking at it, my name is backwards. So let's go back. Uh, we're getting all uh, discombobulated here. I'll hit the one key, and that puts me in the end view. Okay, so the one key puts me there. And I'm going to rotate this thing 180 degrees. I'm just hitting the R key for rotate. If I hold down the control button while I rotate, it constrains it to, I think, five degree increments. And then we click, and it should be... Uh, it should be perfect. Of course, we'll have to position it again. I'll grab it, maybe position it there. I'm going to go to side view and just make sure we can see it above and below. And we're now ready to cut it away. And to do that, we actually we want to cut it from the case, so we select the case. We go to modifiers, and we're going to add a Boolean. From Boolean, what we can do is then use the little eyedropper to select the object. And then we simply click the apply button. And then if I click on the text and grab it and move it away, look what happened. I'm going to delete the text because we want to make sure we don't export the text uh, when we get rid of this thing. Actually, you know what I should maybe do is go File Save. Make sure you save this as a blend file, and I'll just call it uh, case.blend, or case, hit Enter twice, it's saved. And then I'm going to delete this, hit the X key, and we've got our object. We're ready for, uh, for printing. Actually, I can see one more problem. This is not going to work well. We've got these the, the little parts of the B here. So I think we should probably remove those first. And to do that, we'll hit Tab to go into Edit Mode. I'll hit the A key twice. And then I'm going to hit the... I could use B and drag over top, but I'm going to I'm going to end up getting some vertices I don't want. Um, and actually, what I'll do as well is go into Wireframe Mode, and I'll use the C key. And with the C key, I can just drag around like that and like this. And then you right-click the mouse, and that, that takes you back to the regular cursor. Hit the X button, and we'll get rid of the vertices. And that should be all we need to do. Hit Tab. Uh, we can go back into uh, 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 Shading. And that is looking pretty good. Now, I, I know it's not a perfect B, but there's, there's no other. The only way we could do that is if we, didn't, if we only engrave this a little ways. 
But then we've also got a problem because um, we would have to put some kind of support underneath it and uh, that because there's too much of an overhang and that would be a problem. So I'm, I'm going to leave this just like it is and I'm going to go File, Export, Export STL and I'm going to call this, it's case came up, a case uh, finished, Export STL, yeah, we'll click on that and that should be in my folder. So let's go back to Downloads. Case finished STL, there it is, double click it. And hopefully that's gonna open up inside of Cura and we're ready for slicing and, and then 3D printing. Okay, that looks pretty good. Slicing's another whole video. That's, uh, so that's it for now, over and out.